This podcast is dedicated to those that are in the mix, making it happen, and want to do better, better at everything. Each episode, our guest will help us be better, do better, and perform better. We will tackle topics that we all deal with in business and in life. Welcome to The Wireless Way. I'm your host, Chris Whitaker, and today is my pleasure to welcome Jay LeVar Bryan Sr., Jay LeVar is a father to four awesome children and the founder and CEO of The Dad's List. He has been a sales and consultative professional for over 17 years with experiences from retail management to network marketing and direct sales. He is an advocate for fatherhood. His company, The Dad's List, is an online community and podcast for dads to promote values, goals, and milestones. The Dad's List Apparel brings awareness to who dads are in today's society. Link is in the show notes. I recommend checking out the Shop Now tab for some cool shirts for the dads in your life. At LeVar Legacy Operations Agency, he solves various problems for existing small business owners and those just getting started. From protecting small business with access to legal counsel to website creation graphic design, and professional photography and video projects. He is also a board member for the nonprofit organization Eris Foundation, where he provides other nonprofits and students with technology. Jay LeVar, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate being here. Well, you know, we're both dads, and today's topic is just about being a, a dad. And you're probably one of the first guys that came to mind and maybe an expert on this topic. And, and uh, I know there's a lot of them out there, but you've been talking to men uh, and dads, you know, for what, over a year and a half now? Yeah, well, uh, on a podcast, a year and a half. But overall, the, the, the Dads List Company has been around since January, February of 2018. So, yeah. Wow, wow. So tell me a little bit more about Jay LaVar, tell me about the road that you've traveled that's brought you here today. Yeah, so um, like like other people, you know, life has been full of ups and downs. And uh, but about two years ago, I felt this burning desire to switch my focus to something that, you know, I've learned about years ago, which was about passion and purpose and kind of figuring out where does that really lie um, and play a role in my life. And, you know, I've always wanted to do something that I was passionate about, something that I could identify, like really fulfills my purpose. Um, but I really didn't have a complete, you know, clear picture of what that looked like. I know what things that I enjoy doing. I know what things made me happy. Uh, but just from a career standpoint, uh, I just wasn't 100% sure because I had these different skill sets, you know, and I didn't know if I was supposed to take the path directly in one area more than another. Um, and I've had, you know, corporate positions. I've done network marketing. I've done all kind of other stuff. So I just wasn't sure. But then um, a couple of years ago, I was really praying about it. I just, man, I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing is not just for the money. I need to do something that I can feel like I would do for free and I would feel fulfilled and something that my children would be proud of. And, um, and while I was going through that thought process, I just couldn't stop thinking about my kids. And it was almost like a distraction. Mm-hmm. And I realized that's not a distraction. That was a hint. And... I realize how passionate I am about fatherhood. And when I have friends who are passionate about fatherhood, we have those conversations. Or sometimes I'll see things on TV and I'm just like, man, this this upsets me. You know, like when I watch a TV sitcom and the mother walks away because she has to go run errands and she leaves all the kids with the father. And the whole episode is based on how quickly will the house fall apart under the, under the dad's supervision, right? And that upsets me, you know? So, um, Then I just started to realize uh, I probably need to do something in this space. And um, and then that's kind of where things kind of started getting in that direction. Wow. Right. So and and so that obviously that's what led you to the dad's list. Um, And hey, full disclosure, I was privileged and honored to be one of your guests. So, you know, go check it out, the dad's list and, and, uh, hear me stumble through my long story of, uh, four kids and whatnot. It it was a blast, by the way, I actually went back and listened to that, uh, recently a week or so ago. And, and it made me laugh out loud a few times. It was, it was such a fun time. Yeah, man. 
you know, yeah, I think a lot, you know, there's so many different types of dads, right? I mean, and that's something that you kind of helped me think about because, you know, sometimes when you got blinders on and you're only looking at your life, mm -hmm. that's kind of human nature. I don't, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because, man, that's how I, I looked at my experience with my dad and what kind of dad I was trying to become. And, uh, and then, you know, because of your podcast, it really made me think about all the different types of dads. What, what's been some, you know, most impactful or surprising observations and, you know, tell us, tell us to share with us about the types of dads you've had on the show. Oh, yeah, we've had a lot of dads. We've had stay at home dads. We've had single fathers. Um, we've had uh, fathers who are people who you had no clue that what they were going through by themselves. Um, people who had a lot of support, people who didn't have a lot of support, uh, Dads that were great at speaking up for themselves, those who really didn't say much at all. Uh, there was, there's just been so many different types of dad. Dads of multiples, um, you know, you know, dads with, with 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 their kids are out of the house now. Um, you know, so you're one of those those dads now, where all your kids are grown. <laughs> you know, right. but it's 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 been so interesting to get some perspective from diff dads with different backgrounds, and. Um, and a lot of that has to do with dads who didn't have a dad growing up. You know, they did not have a role, a role model. Um, their mothers did everything or their grandmother or their family mothers or their brothers or their, their half brothers, parents, you know, things like that, the stepfathers in their lives. Um, so to get a chance you to, you mean, you mean they didn't get an instruction manual? Right. How to be a dad book? I mean, no, I didn't get, <laughs> funny enough, I didn't get a copy either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me either. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, so it's been interesting to talk about, uh, talk to all these different types of fathers with different backgrounds because it helps you appreciate how many different ways we are phenomenal men, right? And so um, that's, right. that's really, really been, outstanding to get a chance to to witness and i know it's a privilege because i know um one thing that women do very very well is communicate with each other and they they share their excitements together they share their wins they share their losses they share when they're sad they come together in, in groups they, they 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 organize they do a lot of things to support each other but men for one reason or another whether it's ego pride um whatever the reason is we just have a hard time with communicating with each other and really being open with each other and being vulnerable with each other. So to interview these different fathers um, and a lot of the stories also that, that I've come across did not come from the podcast. The podcast only came about when I realized that not everybody was comfortable with writing out their experience. So we originally started with getting written submissions from dads, kind of just sharing their story. And then it transitioned into a podcast where people were more comfortable talking out loud about it. But um, but to read these different stories and backgrounds, it's been amazing. And so, yeah, for us to be able to start finding ways to communicate with each other and, and being open with each other, it allows us to grow from each other and empower each other. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned, you know, how women communicate and support each other. And, and you're right. I mean, gosh, such a difference in how men do it. But that made me think about another type of dad. I know a couple of single mothers out there that uh, have a you know a child, a son. One comes to mind, good friend of mine. She is a fantastic mother and mm -hmm. dad because there is no dad, right? And mm -hmm. that might be something interesting to to go down that road. Have you thought about that, or have you you know do you know uh, some women that that really serve as the dad as well? Yeah, most definitely. And that's the thing. And the way I look at it, and I don't know if it's the right way to look at it, but this is just my perception, you know. Sure. Um, yes, there, there's a way that we define women who are playing both roles as playing both roles, the mom and the dad. Um, but for me, just my outlook on it, I don't see her as playing the dad role. I, I see her as just being an amazing mom because being an amazing mom covers a multitude of skill sets you know? And so, um, so yeah, so as far as my podcast is concerned, uh, if I brought a woman onto the podcast, it wouldn't be because she's playing both roles. If, if anything, it would be more so to get her perspective on just, you know, fatherhood than the impact, because sometimes it's not just her playing, you know, both roles, but also it's 
what roles did she grow up under? Who did who raised her? Or maybe she has a brother who is an amazing father as well. And just yeah, getting her yeah. perspective on it and how important it is for for a woman to know that that leadership role is in place from a, from a, from a man to the, to her children, yeah. things like that. And that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. No, I, I get it. You're right. I see your point there. That makes a lot of sense. Because on the same token, there are dads mm-hmm. that are playing both roles, right? There are dads that have to be motherly and nurturing and kind of overcome their natural instinct of being the protector dad. And, and especially, I, I could only imagine, you know, dads, single dads to have, to have little girls. Right. And that's got to that's gotta be, a, and, and, you know, having three daughters myself, I've, we talked about this on your podcast. Oftentimes I had to, force myself to be a little more nurturing and understanding and patient with my daughters, because that's what they needed at that moment. You know, and there's other times they, you know, they're, they're all three amazing women, as you know, and now, so knock on wood, it seems like I did okay. And of course I had a great partner in crime, my wife, Heather, right? So. Right. Well, that's the thing. I had one of my favorite episodes that I recorded was with um, a friend of mine. His name is Scott and he's a single dad. And he got custody of his kids when they were very young. Um, I believe both he has two daughters and they were, I think, maybe like eight and 10 at the time. And um, and even that was a struggle for him to gain custody from a legal situation. But wow. once he was able to obtain custody of his daughters, here he is. He didn't have other role models. He didn't have other you know women in his life that he could utilize. And he didn't have a village. He was literally by himself. And there were a lot of situations where he mentioned that when his daughters would go through certain phases of their early, their preteen lives, you know, he would rely on his daughter's friend's mom as a resource to be part of that village because he didn't have help. So the struggle that he's gone that he's gone through to raise his daughters by himself and being innovative and finding ways to put himself out there to receive help whenever possible. I mean, that that speaks volumes, not only of himself and his character, but what we as men are capable of, of doing and being um, when it comes to parenting. And, and that's that's the reason why I wanted to have that podcast and have the company in place, because those are the stories that our society needs to hear. We're, we're not just, you know, we're not just protectors, you know, and we're not just providers, but we, we can be anything we need to be for the sake of our children, you know? Yeah. What what have you personally gotten out of doing the you know the dad says have you grown through this and you know what kind of trends have you seen uh, any any kind of common threads with all the conversations you've had? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll tell you this much: I've grown so much because um, when I talk about empowering each other, uh, I've empowered I've been empowered many times through the different conversations. There's things where I would hear different approaches on how to handle your kids. Uh, one big area for me was my daughter. I have one daughter and I have three boys. My daughter is my oldest and she just turned 10 a few days ago on the second. And um, I didn't, I, you know, outside of the cliches you see in TV, on TV and in movies, um, I didn't know how to raise a daughter. <laughs> you know, I had no clue. All I know is keep her away from boys and, <laughs> you know, and, um, and try to love her as much as possible. But what I didn't realize was, yeah, there's there's a lot of hand holding sometimes, you know. And not all daughters are not the same. I know, but for my daughter, um, she val- it doesn't matter how old she is, she values being tucked in at night, <laughs> like religiously, you know. And that's a big thing for her. And I have to realize how big that is for her, and I have to cater to that to make sure that I'm not making something that's a big deal to her a small deal to me. And when I hear some of these different fathers who are raising their da- their daughters, uh, my conversation with you was a huge uh, influence towards me because, you know, uh, one thing that I love about the relationship that you and Heather have with your daughters and your son, Marcus, is there's a level of respect, like parent-child, but there's this level of friendship that was just amazing to me that I've always watched and I've always admired. And to see how you have that presence with your daughters where they know not to cross you, but at the same time, they still trust you and they still come to you and they still want to share with you. And I want to do all the things that I can now while my daughter is 10 so she can feel safe enough to share with me if there's a problem 
and not only involve me when things are good. And so, but it starts from now and it starts with how I talk to her, how I communicate with her, how do I love her? What kind of example am I being to her? And so, um, which gets very frustrating sometimes because, you know, my personality type as an individual, I'm very much a shark. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm a shark that, you know, I mean, when I'm in business mode, I'm a go getter, you know, mon- uh, self motivated, the whole nine, very little room for, 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 <laughs> for, for BS, you know what I mean? And, right, um, right. So that's me. But I also like to have fun. But at the same time, it's very difficult sometimes when I'm at home and, you know, my daughter is, is, is being who she is. And then I just, man, I just have a, I, I, mm, that's not me. And if this was, if this was anybody else, <laughs> I wouldn't right, even right. be entertaining this conversation right now, you know? Um, but I've been, but through the different conversations I've had with you and some of these other men we've interviewed on the podcast, um, I've been adjusting and I've been learning and I've been doing my best and um, just trying to, I, I fall back, you know, many times, but I, I, I keep remembering the purpose of why I'm doing this and what kind of daughter I want to raise. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's been very educational for me to talk to these different men and to implement a lot of what I've learned with my own children. Is there a common thread of woven through all the conversations or are they all pretty unique and different? They're all unique and different, but I would definitely say the one common thread that all the, the dads have in common is their definition of legacy. Um, legacy is a is the question that I ask usually at the end of the podcast, and more times than not, everyone says basically the same thing, which is they want their children to be an example of their legacy. It's not so much what they do or what they're leaving their children with, um, you know, physically, monetarily, you know, or anything like that. They want to make sure that their children's lives. Is an, ex- is, is an example of the father that they were. And I, I, that's been the most common thread. And I, I have the same belief as well. And that's my goal as well. Wow. No, that is, that's deep. And that's what I love about what you're doing. You're challenging all men to think about their legacy. I don't know if that's a human nature thing. You know, as a rule, I think we generally don't think about our death. Right. I mean, we don't live our life going, I'm going to die one day. I mean, I think we live our life going, Hey, today's the day, you know? <laughs> and, um, uh, that is so important to, you know, for any parent to just remember, you know, how we raise this little human being, this, you know, this future adult has ramifications. that's going to ripple on for generations. Most definitely. So again, I, I just, man, I, Full disclosure, too. I, I haven't had a chance to listen to all of them. I'm gonna I'm working on them. I'm, I'm gonna try to get through all your podcasts. But uh, yeah, as we shared earlier, you're the you are a big motivation and inspiration for me to do this podcast, which is why I'm really grateful and thankful. And I think it was just meant to be that you're now a guest on my on my podcast. So, uh, um, you know, thinking of all the conversations you've had, what is the biggest challenge for men? today and and being that dad that that we've been talking about yeah i i think the biggest challenge like i mentioned a few moments ago is just being vocal when we need help you know being able to come together as men and to have these deep rooted conversations about fatherhood and the challenges that we face you know uh, whether you're a stay-at-home dad that's a single father or an extremely busy entrepreneur trying to juggle life career family uh, we can all help each other heal and we can all help each other grow, uh, but we just need to open up and speak to each other, you know, release some of our frustrations, you know, s- cry if we have to. Like, it's it's cool to cry with other dudes, you know what I mean? Um, and then also just share our successes. You know, it doesn't always have to be doom and gloom. And like, man, there are plenty of dads who are winning out there. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling trying to balance. I have... You know, several businesses that I, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I have a full-time career, like an actual job that I manage from home. And then I also have my four kids, you know, and I'm a stay-at-home dad for them as well. So trying to juggle all of that, there are men out there who are winning at that. They figured it out. I just got to find them and talk to them and start figuring out, hey, what's working? And then not everything that works for one is going to work for the other. But, you know, a phrase that I love to use all the time is, you know, you got to eat the meat and spit out the bones. You know what I mean? So Hmm. figure out what works for you, but we got to reach out, man. We got to talk to each other. So I'd definitely say 
communicating with each other and being open with each other and being vulnerable, uh, that's definitely the biggest challenge that I think a lot of men uh, struggle with today when it comes to being a dad. What advice do you have for, you know, working dads? You know, because I think uh, before you answered, you know, my thought of myself being a dad and a lot of men I know that are dads, we kind of view ourselves as we're responsible for keeping the roof over our heads and, and, you know, bringing home the bacon and being the disciplinarian and, you know, all those kind of uh, ingrained expectations of dadhood. Uh, You know, some are accurate, maybe some are not, you know, and, and we, you know, we've discussed it's different for everybody, but um, what advice do you have for dads that are, you know, trying to get it done and the, the pressure of it or I, 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 let me rephrase it. A new dad, one of your friends is expecting a baby. Mm-hmm. What's your advice for a new dad? Maybe that's a better way of phrasing it. My, the first thing I would think of is being whoever your kids need you to be. Um, One thing that I've learned that I have four kids and by no means am I a veteran because of the number of kids that I have. Each one of my kids are completely different. I also have one who's autistic and who has sensory processing disorder. Um, I have only one girl. Like I have all these very variation of, of factors in play. But one thing that I realize is that I have to be what each one of them needs. And it's, it's paying attention to who they are becoming You know, so when they're toddlers, are they more chill? Are they more rambunctious? You know, as they start getting into five years old and six years old, what habits are they starting to showcase? You know, what skill sets are they showcasing? You know, I'll give you a good example. My my second born, which is my first son, Jay LaVar II, he, you know, he... (laughs) Fortunately and unfortunately, he has my tongue. <laughs> <He's>, <Uh-oh. laughs> right. Um, I know in the future he'll be very successful with it if he knows how to wield it properly. Um, but right now it gets him into trouble <laughs> all the time because he just has no filter and he just says what comes to mind and he challenges status quo. And he, you know, it's like it doesn't even matter that I'm his dad. If something don't look right, he's going to say, but dad, you said not to do this, but you're now doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, and he just has no filter whatsoever. But um, instead of, I learned early on, instead of trying to punish him for those things all the time that gets him in trouble, um, you know, assume positive intent. Assume that he has no clue that he's putting this, he's stepping in into, into some mess. But look at it from a different point of view. He has this ability to see things for how they are. And how do I cultivate that? How do I help him um, use that for good and not evil? How do I help him use that as a strength and not a weakness? And um, and how do I calmly approach that, even if it upsets me, right? Uh, I have my knee jerk my knee jerk moments where I'm just like, "Don't talk to me like that. I'm your father. You know, show me some respect." However, um, but there are there are more times that I realize he he has no clue he was disrespecting me, but let me show him here's the reason why it's wrong here and here's how you can utilize that going forward. And here's how you can help people by having this ability. So for a new dad, I would say uh, pay attention to all of it. And as you start having more kids, if you choose to have more kids, um, be open for each child to be completely different and knowing that you're going to have to adjust who you are. I have, you know, I may have one daughter and someone may say, oh, well, I need to be sensitive for my daughter. And then I have to be a roughneck for my, my boys. But in reality, that's not the situation. You know, I have my, 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 my youngest is two years old. He's going to be three in a few weeks. And there are plenty of times where he's just, he loves to be hugged. He loves to, he told me this morning, he says, I love kisses. (laughs) And he just wants to give me a bunch of kisses. You know what I mean? And like, I have to adjust to that. And I and I and and um, so it's 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 just really being who your kids need you to be, and make sure that they feel special, that they're getting a tailored experience, not just a blanket experience. Great advice, I love it. Where do you see Dad's List going? Oh man, my my goal really is to just have these organizations all across the country and having different pockets of it, you know, different chapters of it in, in different cities and having events that we do on a regular basis. Um, I also really want to get um, a lot of women involved because uh, 
it's more of a parenting thing than just about dads. Um, I'm focusing on dads because I, I think our society needs that focus right now. But overall, you know, I would love to have women on the podcast to share about, you know, their experiences with the men in their lives. You know, it could be a brother that's a great father, their fa- their fathers themselves, um, a neighbor that they know that is an amazing father. I would love to get their their perspective and the role that they play. Um, but yeah, so branching out, having this online community that we have right now where we're constantly communicating and sharing with each other, uh, but also having live events where we can bring in different speakers on different subjects and be able to just teach each other and grow. Uh, but overall, just having these different chapters throughout the country where there's local places that you can go to and um, and just empower each other. I think that's that's definitely the route that I definitely want to go with this. Yes, I, I believe it was Stu Weber in a book called Tinder Warrior, I believe. I'm going to quote this right. But yeah, he, he talks about his iron sharpens iron. Yes. And, um, and you're doing a great job at that, man. I, I'm... Again, just uh, it's fine. I cannot imagine Jay Lavar having a bad day or losing your tongue, <laughs> pull your tongue, because you you're just a genuine nice guy. And uh, but but we all have that other side sometimes that we try to <laughs> not show <laughs> people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, we've covered a lot. I feel like in a short amount of time. Is there anything else on your mind or on this topic that we haven't talked about? You want to share? Hmm. I think really um, when we talked about the most important thing that we're dads are struggling with, I think one thing that we can do is just be proactive because maybe, mm. maybe a dad does not reach out, but can you reach out? And that's, and that's to everyone. That, that's not just from one man to another. That's women. Um, if you know a dad, reach out and find out, Hey, you and my husband should get together or you and my brother should get, should, should connect. Um, and not that because you're seeing a problem that needs to be addressed. It's just finding ways to unify us. So um, I think that's something I think we should all do is try to be proactive, um, pointing them to great resources. You know, my podcast is one, but there's tons of them. You know, I follow a lot of dad bloggers and dad organizations on social media that this is not a competition. It's not one organization is better than the other. We are all on the same path. We are fighting for the same mission to change the narrative of how fathers are being seen in our society. And so point people in the right direction. If it's not my podcast, somebody else's podcast. If it's not, you know, my blog is somebody else's blog. If it's, you know, what went, if it's not my website, it's somebody else's website. Let's just support each other. Let's men and women get together to build, you know, better fathers, man. Um, our society needs it. Our children depend on it and they need it. There's so many studies out there about the value of a man in, in the household and, and the impact that makes for for any gender of children, you know? So um, I, I think we just need to, if, if we're not going to reach out, if someone's not going to reach out to us, we need to reach out to them. And this needs to be a team effort. Yes, that's... Uh... I asked a similar question yesterday to another guest, and it was really around the topic of Veterans Day and you know, what can we do. And you know, he said the same thing. It's just, interestingly enough, it comes down to communication, helping your fellow human out to get through life. You know, there's a lot to be said in strength in numbers kind of thing. So that's that's uh, I definitely, as you were saying, I was just thinking of friends in my life that are dads that that I haven't asked, hey, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Right. It's always how the kids, how's the wife? Right. We don't always ask, how are you doing? Right. You know, anything I can do to help you, anything you want to talk about, but that is some great advice. You yeah. got some how good nuggets here. I, I, you know? I, I call them, there's, little, there's little gold nuggets of, of tips and advice, man. Uh, so, gosh, uh, thanks for being here today. I think we could go on and on. Um, and I encourage all, my, all of our, my friends and listeners to, to check out your podcast, Dad's List, and reach out to, to Jay LaVar and Jay LaVar Legacy if you have any questions or ideas or thoughts. Uh, thank, you, thank you for being here, man. Thank you, man, for having me. And I, again, I appreciate you being inspired to get things going because, again, this is just another way of reaching out to other people, man. And podcasting right now is such a big platform, um, especially with everyone you know, being at home and dealing with COVID and all that, like, it's great for us to have another way to reach out to everyone. So thank you for doing this. I appreciate being here. 
My pleasure. Thanks so much. Be sure to check out my next episode, Work in 2020, A Military Spouse, A Mac, and a Mindset with my guest, Kendall Rogers from Edify.